Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of OM Genomics. I'm Maria Natastad. No, I'm Maria Natastad. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the OM Genomics Show. I am Maria Natastad and today I thought we would do a question and answer type episode and I have recruited uh, Robert Abukhalil, fellow bioinformatics software engineer, to ask the questions. I have chosen some questions from the YouTube comments. I also get a lot of emails, uh, but we'll start with some YouTube questions. All right, Robert. What is our first question? Hi, Maria. It seems you no longer recommend learning R. Any specific reason for that? Yeah, so I, when I first started doing this YouTube channel, I was heavily using both R and Python, as well as Bash. Um, since then, I have mostly stopped using R, and that is because I'm really focusing on doing software as opposed to analysis. So I think R is really great for analysis. It's great for plotting, things like ggplot. I just have not been able to find anything quite as useful in Python. Uh, so I think still that R is really great for a lot of those things. I do prefer Python myself because it's a more general programming language. If you're trying to learn coding more in general, and you want to build bigger software systems, I think it makes more sense to focus on Python than R. If, however, you are doing statistical analysis or you work in parts of bioinformatics um, that work more with statistics than what I do, uh, then R could be a really great choice for you. How much of your advice applies to places outside of the US. I'm in the Netherlands. I, I think many of the analysis related things are going to apply across the board. We all use the same bioinformatics tools, right? The things that are mostly going to apply differently outside of the US is anything related to the job market. So I would even say that the advice about getting as much into the uh, software side of bioinformatics can be more lucrative like that i think still makes sense outside of the us from what i've seen but you should always take my advice or perspectives i would say with a grain of salt go look it up see whether the job listings in your own country match what i'm saying you know try to find salaries try to verify this information try to talk to other people who are more similar to what you want to do and where you want to live and work and get perspectives from them as well. And I also want to ask for all non-Americans watching this, if you have perspectives that you want to share, please do share uh, your answers to these questions in the comments, either of this video or the other videos that you've seen from me. All right, question three. Thank you for your video. Do you have to know your specific research interests before applying to a PhD? I'm a rising senior majoring in computational biology and biochemistry. I love the bioinformatics work from sequence analysis to protein structure, but I don't know exactly what I would want to focus on for a PhD. I thought about doing a PSM in bioinformatics. Wait, and then what's a PSM? I thought about doing a master's degree in bioinformatics and then work in industry to gain more experience and see what I'm interested in. What are your thoughts on that? That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> um, okay, if we all had to pick our research interests before even applying to a PhD program, I think very few people would actually end up doing PhDs. So usually you don't need to know exactly what you want to research since you ultimately will design your project with your advisor once you've gotten into the phd program possibly done some rotations picked an advisor and started talking to them about your interests so i think a phd is a more flexible place to figure out what your interests are than in industry so industry can be a great place to learn skills but not so much to explore your interests 
So if I were you, I would not do a whole master's just to work in industry for a few years, just because you're not sure yet what you want to study in the PhD. I personally learned a lot about my interests while interviewing for PhD programs. It was very interesting for me to meet a lot of the professors. They all you know, talked about their research and we could ask them questions. And so this was a time when I probably like I met dozens of professors and could talk to them about their research, got exposed to lots of different things, and that helped me figure out a little bit more what I was interested in, which evolved over the time I was interviewing even. And then once I finally got into a PhD program and rotated with a few people, that helped me um, figure out my interests even more. And ultimately I chose, I ended up working on something that was fairly that I wouldn't have been able to predict uh, because it was new enough. It was based on a technology that was coming out that we had access to. And, you know, it's not always going to be just like, oh, I want to study this particular thing. I would suggest that you just apply to the PhD programs, see where you get interviews, see if you get inspired about any particular topics while you're going through those processes. I hope that helps. Do you think we've answered this question? Fantastic. Cool. Are there even industry positions for bioinformatics? I live in Switzerland and I've seen some, but they all require massive amounts of experience and a clean CV for what, 90 to 110K? That's not PhD level money in Switzerland. The short answer is you don't have to study bioinformatics. When you're choosing your career, you need to choose based on what you want to do with your life, what impact you want to have in the world, what is the day-to-day -day work that you will enjoy doing, and will it give you the things you need to make the rest of your life good, such as money, the place you can live, all of that extra stuff, health insurance. If you really care about the money, by all means, I, I would actually recommend that you just become a software engineer. You can always work in biotech, and then you can still take your skills with you somewhere else if you're not happy with the money you can make in biotech. I don't think you want to necessarily do a PhD if it already bothers you at this stage that you're not going to make that much money coming out of a PhD doing bioinformatics. But in many cases, people there are many people who prefer doing bioinformatics science and maybe for them it's okay to not be making like massive amounts of money it depends on what's good enough to have a good life in the place that you're in so it's a very personal choice okay question five day-to-day -day work this comment comes from the video five steps for getting started with bioinformatics thank you so much this was extremely helpful you're welcome I was feeling overwhelmed and this video made me feel better. I now feel more confident to pursue a master's degree in bioinformatics. I was wondering if you can explain how your work is day to day. Do you work with many different health professionals or mostly alone? Is it fast paced or demanding? Thanks for this comment. It's great to hear. My work day to day is not hectic or fast paced. I am usually coding to build tools for scientists, including myself, to use. Uh, often I'm experimenting with new analyses by stringing together bioinformatics tools and putting some Python coding in between to fill in the gaps. Uh, it depends a lot on where you work though. I'm more on the research side, so I really like and I really like being on the software side of the research side, if you know what I mean. Basically, I love coding and I like using coding to build things that scientists can use. And I wouldn't say I work alone, but I do spend most of each day coding by myself and that's how I like it. Um, I also have meetings scattered throughout the week, half of which were added during the pandemic just to make sure that I still see my teammates, even though we can't eat lunch together at the office anymore, which is very sad. There are many other roles that are more extroverted, so you can still do lots of work that ends up having you talking to people constantly if that's what you want. Um, but unlike business administration or something, you don't have to do that. You can be more on the research or software engineering side and like go into your cave and do deep work, which is great. I love it. So 
Uh, do you think that answers the question? Yes, it does. All right. Well, that's it for today. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> yep, that, um, okay. That wraps it up for our Q&A video. Um, if you want to leave additional comments to ask more questions and so on, we will eventually try to answer them.